Okay. New watch page. Whatever. All right. I believe we are live. Why is this so... Oh, okay. That makes sense. Auto. There we go. Let's just change it to 720. And I can see it a little bit better. There we go. All right. So. Hello, Tony. Larissa. Timon. Uh, who else is in here? Let's take a look. Charles. Big Bang, Helen, hope you are all well. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to finish up these guys here, get them all ready to go, then um, away they go. So, what's the first thing that we want to do? All right, let me see here. I'm gonna f I just fixing the camera so I can see myself live. Jonathan, how are you? Good to see you. Hope you are well. Hope everybody's well. Okay, so a couple things that we want to just kind of... I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And I want to make sure that I draw myself a little line here so I know exactly where... I, oh, God. That's okay. That's okay. I just had a little spillage because that cup I use, I use for the terrain stuff. Now uh, white stuff gets all over the place. All right, there we go. Perfect. First thing to do is slap two people that thumb down or, oh, yeah, you know, come on. You know, it's just people that are jealous. I mean, I could see if I did a bad show and then they just didn't like it, that's fine. Thumb down away. But you know what you do? Just thumb it up. Everybody just thumb it up and it goes away. Who cares? That's the last thing I'm worried about. Hey, it's my channel. We just do whatever. And we don't worry about little things like that. I know the people that come here. I'm not here to play up to everybody, so don't worry about it. It's fine. That's what I say. So anyways, we kind of got everybody kind of where we want to have them. And now I just want to put a couple of numbers on these guys here. And just for anybody that missed it yesterday. So here's the way this is going to go. I'm going to be able to probably get these all based. Then I am going to have to let it dry overnight. Then uh, tomorrow night I'll probably clear coat it. Then clear coat it again Friday. And then Saturday I'll get it all packed up. And then get it in the mail on Monday for Mr. Dan King. These are for Dan King, the Game Boy Geek, who is just a tremendous guy. And I would I would stop time for him. And he's the guy that I've been kind of fussy. I, I painted one set and I didn't like how it came out. And I felt bad because I needed to get this done for him. I, uh, I showed one of our patrons the, the set and he was like, I really like that. Can I have it? And I said, sure. <laughs> And that took care of a patron thing, which I was fine with. If you see, I'm using some of these, some of these rub numbers, and, and, and all you do—they're not decals, and they they actually work pretty good because you can you can cut them out and and use this right here. Uh, hey, made it to a live one, Eugene. How are you? And then all you're gonna do is you're just gonna, well, at least to what I do. Um, where the heck is the thing I use? Oh, I use the nail file here. And all I'm going to do is just take and rub the number in. So it goes right on to our, our little friend here. And then I just pull it away and boom. We've got numbers on our, our guy here. Like so. It kind of gives it a nice little change and look. I kind of like it. And then we're going to just do this guy here, too, since we got him out here. Oops, I had it the wrong way. And you could just do it however you want. You know, whatever you're comfortable with. I just know that with these guys here, it just really, I really like it. It kind of adds 
to the whole flavor of everything. Now, I've got some really cool news. Oh, there we go. See, we add a couple more numbers there. Really kind of just set them apart, you know? It's something different. I, I kind of like doing that. Okay, there we go. All right, so that's good for that. That's good for these. Oh, what the heck was that? Oh. I like the way these came, and these are fine. So, why don't we stop horsing around? This is just simple white glue. So, I've got a, go a couple of things that I, I bought at. As you can see, let me back this up a little bit here. At, uh, yes, our dear friends, Hobby Lobby. And I, I always buy the bigger things because they make more sense. Now, why is that, you ask? Well, I'll tell you why. First of all, this really fine gray stuff is perfect for a couple things. Um, it's really good when you're doing snow because you can add a little bit of gravel there and it breaks up the snow. So why don't we do that one first? So what we're going to do is we are going to take some of this. Uh, I usually just, I'm going to back this out just a hair. I just take this out and I just pour this into here as you can see boom I put a good amount in there all right so now let's zoom back in so you can see what the heck I'm doing Nathaniel how are you Dutch Yoda good to see you all right here we go so I always take an old junky brush which this is my glue brush I know because it's hard as rock. That's usually a pretty good sign. And then I always like to use this white glue. All right, really just simple stuff. And what I'll do is I will just get a little on there and get it on there pretty thick. There we go. And I'm just going to squeeze that in there on each of these. All right. And we're going to get that in there on that one there, too. All right. Then I'm just going to move it around a little bit. And I want to make sure I get everywhere. I'm not too worried if I get a little on the feet there because after all, well, let's think about it. You're going on all this dirt and nothing's going to stay clean forever, right? Now the one thing I wanted to do is I wanted to remember what color was underneath and these are black. <laughs> so I don't have to do anything else to it. So I'm going to move, put this right here. And then all I'm going to do is just put this in here. And then I'm going to take my tweezers. And I'm just going to kind of push that down a little bit. Because I want it to stick in there real good. So we're going to shake that off. Tap it a little bit. And I always run my finger around the edges. Basing is not a hard process. It's not hard at all. So there. And we're going to do the same thing again over here. So we're going to do all kinds of different bases. Rob, I know it's off topic and you're not exact in the exact area, but do you know of some fun, cheap stuff to do in Orlando? As I will be down there in mid-June. -Ju hmm. Fun stuff to do in Orlando. Well... You can always go down OBT and dodge bullets. That's a good time. Um, they have a high crime rate down there, so the chances of you having some excitement is very high. But in all honesty, the, the only thing I can really suggest in Orlando is we have the greatest theme park in the world, and that's Disney World and Universal it's expensive inexpensive okay well I'm, I'm 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 working to that babe and <laughs> the queen chiming in 
But honestly, there's some really nice places down there besides the uh, there. I mean, you don't have to go to the theme parks um, because the theme parks are expensive, but they have a lot of unique stuff. Like for, it, it's not too expensive to go to, um, oh, what the heck is it? Like the, the water parks there, Tam. They're not that expensive. The Disney ones? Yeah. The Disney ones are now like uh, $70 a day. Oh, they're $70 a day? Well, never mind that. Well, they have Dave and Buster's there. Fun spot. There's Fun Spot, which is, is very affordable. You can buy a wristband there and drive all the go-karts and all of the roller coasters and stuff all day. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, you, uh, if you couldn't hear, she said you can buy a wristband and go drive all the go-karts and rides and arcades and stuff and fun spot is very affordable for the family um i'm trying to think what else we have we have beaches we have some of the best beaches if you're going to orlando you're only half hour away uh disney springs is there city walk you know, you can go eat there. They have some nice little things. They have little boats that you can do there and stuff like that without going into the parks. And uh, just enough to keep you going. And our beaches are really known for shark attacks. So, you know, if you are a gambling person, please come on by and visit New Smyrna. Tell them that they can go um, to Gaylord Palms. Gaylord Palms. It's unique to go to. You can just park there. There, they have a bunch of different types of restaurants in there, and it it's a hotel that has a boat in it, and different. It represents different parts of Florida. It's very, very unique and very, very cool. They also have a new water park there. They also have a new water park. She's telling me. So there's a lot to do here. Um, and uh, pretty much, that's about it. Uh, let's see. I beg to differ theme parks. SoCal is where it's at. Oh, here we go, Lori. We're going to get in a fight right now? Uh, Disney Orlando. Liz, how are you? Disney Orlando trumps California Disney hands down. Yep. Yeah. Oh, we don't want to do this, do we? <laughs> Does Coke still do the amount off for Disneyland, Disney World with cans? No, not now. Hmm. No, not now. But, you know, the summer is coming. Okay, so boom. So let me just clear this off a little bit because I got a little sand all over the place. So we kind of got this, this basic base in there so far. So because this is my glue thing we're just going to move that over there and we're going to kind of do the same thing for this guy here too i mean these these three guys here because we're going to stay with the snow theme and i'm going to show you how the snow theme works as you can see i put a little grass there and, and stuff like that and i really want it to kind of stick out a little bit so there we go let me just move this this angle that fly is on my computer and he's going to get knocked out he is going to get knocked out, that boy. Thanks for all the info. I do believe I will be visiting Disney Springs. Uh, Waki, Wak, Wikichi, Wakichi. Universal, near? Universal City Walk is also good. Yep. They have a lot of new stuff down there. Yeah, Universal City Walk has a whole bunch of new stuff there. So that's good also. It's cheap glue bottle. There we go. And let's just get this in here. There we go. We're gonna get all these guys based and then we're gonna do a little more. We're gonna we're gonna work on them a little bit more. Because we want them to look nice for Dan. Dan's a good guy. And you know, you never know if he's ever going to play it live. But again, I told him not to. You know, you don't have to advertise for me. I didn't do this because I want to advertise for him. I wanted to do this because I really like and respect Dan. And of course, he's a teammate for the Miniature Market Group. 
So I want to make sure that I got this done. And plus I had like five sets to do anyways for all our wonderful patrons. This was one of the most requested games. Whoa, come back here, son. Don't be jumping all over the place. All right. So we're just going to work our glue around. And I like to put it on nice and thick so it dries really well. See, this is white, so I'm going to I'm going to paint white around the the edges and that's going to be really kind of cool. This first coat really isn't as important as the second glue I'll put on there where we'll add things in. Okay, let's see. Uh, agree, must agree with Lori that you can see Universal, the Gettys and the Space Shuttle and never leave Los Angeles. Well, let me tell you something. I can sit in my backyard and watch, watch and watch the shuttle lift off. You guys are just looking at an old shuttle. <laughs> <laughs> I get to I get to watch SpaceX make all the mistakes that they're making. Matter of fact, oh satellites going up, yeah, whatever. Next thing you know, blast off time. It's what happens. Sometimes you take take all these things for granted. Oops, I forgot to do this one here. I'm sorry, guys. See, I got talking. This heated discussion, which is better, Los Angeles or or lovely Orlando. So there we go. Orlando now has voodoo donuts too. Yes, Orlando has voodoo donuts. Like in New Orleans. And Los Angeles, don't they have uh, stars out there? So the rate of snotty people is a lot higher. <laughs> I think, I think Rob's got you beat. I mean, who wants to see a Kardashian? I don't want to be in L.A. to be near them. I mean, no offense. I'm just not a Kardashian fan. I mean, jeez. I can, I can suck up my lips and stick out my fat back end. And, well, I guess nobody would care, but... <laughs> I don't see the difference. But then again, I'm not all plastic. All right. And as you see, we are just... All right, there we go. Let's move that around a little bit. And if you see, I used the, the back end of this just to, to really get that stuff to sit in there nicely. All right. Let's see, what else do we want? All right, oh, I see that other group there I wanna put snow on. But we're gonna do a couple different bases today. We are gonna do a couple different bases. All right, so let's put this like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. And it's very simple to knock all these out pretty quickly. Remember, snow is not always snow white. Got a little dirty snow there too. So, new sponsor, Charles P. Thank you, my brother. I didn't even see that. See, I was so concentrated on things. Charlie, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Your wife is prettier than any A-lister, that's for sure. Liz, look at you, look at you. And I thought I scored points today by telling her how pretty she was. But you come up and you outdid me. So I guess uh, I guess I don't get the promo of the week. You are going to get the promo of the week. Because you cut a good one for the queen. The queen's very pretty. Prettiest girl I ever saw. tell her that every day and and then she makes this weird noise can you make that weird noise, what noise? when I go oh you are the prettiest girl I've ever seen and you go hoo, 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 hoo. No, no. hmm yeah because yeah you're full of shit what do you want what do you want <laughs> Charles I can't thank you enough what happened? I can't thank you enough for becoming a sponsor of the channel that is huge. That means that we can now do 
three new um, that only can be used emojis or whatever they call them. Is that what it is? And I've got some good ones in mind. We are going, you know, our first one was the queen. You could bust out a queen emoji at any time if you are a sponsor. But we are going to do some really cool ones. I'm working with uh, what's the matter? No, she's just being a goofball. Bella's okay. Hey, Big Bang, how are you? And Kabuki, how are you? Yes, if you are a sponsor, you're going to be you're the only ones that can get those special things. And Justin is helping me work on some things. It's been kind of tough, you know, having to do this stuff all by myself again. But I'm getting it. I'm getting it and I'm I'm pretty happy doing it. I enjoy it. But we are getting there. All right. Oh, thirsty dogs. We're going to have a special Bella one. I'm going to have a Gabby one. Or maybe we should have a Gabby and and Bella emoji. What do you think? Um, we need to have... I've got a couple special ones in mind, though. They're actually pretty funny. If I can pull it off, hopefully. I have to uh, inquire the great mind of uh, my son there. Let's just put this on there clear off the brush a little bit there we go uh oh what did we drop what did we drop okay nothing that, that we can't pick up oh god come on rob get with it you're live people are watching <laughs> there they go spamming spamming the queen how about cthulhu kitty yeah wait till you see the cthulhu kitties the one where she got a little cocky. Cthulhu's been having a pretty good life. Uh, she has starred numerously on Play Games TV. We had to take her off. She was getting a little too big for her britches. And I think you'll see in the emoji what I'm talking about. And once I... Just a fly, guys. Let it go. Oh, they're after the fly? Yeah, I'm after the fly, too. I know a certain little girl that let him in the house. All right, let me see if I'm me uh, missing anything. Uh, those look great. Dan will be happy. I hope Dan will be happy because it's important to me. Uh, it's important to me. Dan's a great guy. And we're just doing the finishing touches on it. And I just want to make sure that he likes what we're doing. And we've got a lot of cool things. See, this is the red one, so we're going to paint red around there. But in the meantime, I really want the bases to look nice. I had, I've redone the bases three times because the first time I did it, I did not like it. So I sent those off to somebody. I'm very particular in how I do things. Now all i got to do is paint my own. Hey, Gab. You're going to be an emoji, I promise you. I don't know what I'm doing here. Okay, there we go. And I always take my finger and rub it around the edge. And then just tap down, make sure you got it. With, you know, with the nice thick stuff there, it's going to make a big difference. All right, so we're going to put that aside for a second or two. So we're done with, with this particular sand. Because I think we're going to go a different way with the other one. So why don't we take this and back it out a little bit so you can see how I put it away. Uh, look at all the administrators. It's an all blue chat. Someday we'll have an all green chat. That'd be cool. All right. All these mods. All my mods. Look at that. Okay, just to let the people know, Michaels is having a sale. 60% off items and everything ships free today only. Look at that. 
All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to take this stuff, which is medium bullet, which is dirt. Dirt, dirt, dirt. And we're going to go heavy on the dirt. There we go. And we're going to put that down. And while these just dry just a little bit, we're going to just move these over here. And you guys are going to come over here. There we go. You're done. You're done. You're going to stay over there. You're going to come over here. You, you, and you are going to come over here. And then you're going to come over here. So we're going to let you just dry for a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And we're going to pick this up. And we're just going to kind of just wipe that off a little bit. There we go. All right. Boom. So let's zoom back in just a hair. Let's get that in there. There we go. And for this guy, kind of, I don't want to go. I just didn't see the really tons of snow. I see like a melting, you know, a melting. That's what I'm saying. So we're going to do this. And we're going to, we're going to touch these guys up once we finish these bases. What time is it? Oh, we're moving pretty good then. All right. And there we go there. I almost got everybody done here. There's a couple guys we got to touch up. No big deal. The most important thing is just getting these bases done. And getting these back to Dan. Timon says, Hi, Balaji. For lunch. Oh, had, okay. Uh, at least I don't have buffering issues here. Okay, there we go. No buffering issues. That's good. I don't want anybody to have any buffering issues. Not because of us, at least. All right, let's do that. Oh, we said we were going to do this. And we'll get some glue there. And now if you guys haven't heard or if you've been on a small island somewhere, Spiky Bits is joining our boys over at the Miniature Market. I'm really excited about it. It's going to be nice having him, him for a teammate. And uh, we're doing great. The Miniature Market is really doing a lot of cool things. And they have some really cool plans coming. And I'm telling you, it's going to blow people away. Especially with what they got going on. And they are just killing it old school. They've done, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's up there. They've done some amazing things, and uh, I can tell you there are some things in the future. Without a doubt, that I have talked to the owner, who is a very good friend of mine. And uh, oh, you guys are talking, Rob. Have you given up lifting competitions? Um, no, but it's nothing I sit here and talk about. Mm, Tammy's, you know, I'm an old guy too. You know, you can't keep on living like you're a kid anymore. So she, you know, she's made. You know, the saying that, you know, what do you got to prove to anybody? You've proven everything that you possibly could prove. She goes, you're not impressing me. <laughs> I never said No, I'm, sa I'm saying I don't have to impress you. I only did them to try to win her love, and it failed. Oh, my God. And I failed dastardly. Yes, I smashed all the records. So, that's 
That's it. You're done. There's no need to. Yeah, she said there's no re there's no reason to break your own records again. to do it again. I disagree, but I go, you keep going until you can't breathe. When you keep going until all the breath is out of you. And you say, that's a good life. It is a day of big announcements. Yeah, it is. Um, also, I like to say congratulations to my, well, I don't know if we're friends, but Rodney, a person I really uh, respect. Uh, I, th I think that's fantastic news. I think they are the leaders of the industry. They are they are the best of the best, and uh, Board Game Geek is really the benchmark for board gaming. And now that they have Rodney on their team, wee! Good luck, good luck getting in their way. You might as well just put the crown on Rodney, King Rodney the first. I'm happy for him because he's just a, a nice person. He's always been nice to me. He, You know, the first time I met him, he knew who I was, so I was kind of shocked at that. And uh, he's just always been polite. I mean, what do you expect? That's why he's, he's he, he is one of the best in the business. In the business, as Dusty Rhodes would say. If you will. <laughs> Remember those days, Dan? What? Dusty Rhodes? Yes. If you will, Nikita. I get funky like a monkey. <laughs> hmm, boy. Ugh. Oh. Is Justin sleeping? He actually doesn't. He's not, feeling he's not feeling well at all. I don't know what's going on with him. He started to lose his voice, so he went and laid down. I think because he had a really hard four minutes taking out the trash. It's very taxing. Took a lot out of him. <laughs> oh, here it comes. Robert, you leave our son alone. Or else I'm going to tell the stream about <laughs> XYZ. All right. Let's get some of this. Let's get some of this on here. Boom, boom, boom. And there's a reason that we go with the heavy, the medium ballista, as they call it, or ballista, or whatever. You see, it gives it. Right now, it just kind of you kind of go, huh? okay, Rob. I don't I don't see what you're doing, Rob. Do you have any plans to hang out with Sam, Tom, and Z soon? No, I do not. Rob, any good movies or books recently? Um, I read a comic book that I found very interesting. Oh God, what the heck was it? Oh, um, I um. I've always been kind of a Frank Miller fan, but um, there's a, a, you guys probably have seen the movie. I'm trying to be as polite as I can about it. It's called Kick-Ass, and, and the superhero was Kick-Ass. Well, they redid it, and it's about this woman who assumes the identity instead of the kid, and, you know, how she came back from... Iraq and um, she couldn't get a job. Her husband left her for some young guy, a young girl or something like that after she served all this time and she was falling behind on bills so she decided to be kick-ass and robbed from drug dealers. And it's just interesting how, how it's all working out because it turns out that her brother-in-law is one of the drug dealers or gang members or whatever you want to call them and we're just at an interesting point. I was very disappointed with Action Comics 1000. Now, I've been reading that for forever. Uh, let me see. Hold on. 
is that sheet with all the numbers behind it a the glue decals they're the, the scratch off decals they really work really well he has monos from kissing his girlfriend no 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 you can't get mono from paper all right how has the queen been feeling is she feeling any better she has her good days she has her bad days but we are getting there much better than last year holy cow. yeah yeah very true we are we are dealing with it um yeah i saw the new kick-ass comic on the shelves at the comic shop i've been reading a lot of independent stuff and it's i don't know why you know uh, first of all i'm a huge marvel fan if you guys ask me a question i can i can without looking it up without moving my hands anything old i can almost tell you the exact issue and what year and and everybody at everybody i know gets a kick out of it because i'm a big marvel fan i always have been and especially with the the old universe but um i've been finding myself buying a lot of independent books like um i'm reading uh i'll answer that rob what are your plans for ittd dutch i don't know what that means when, when was your last lifting competition? Um, God, I'd have to look it up. I've done so many. Um, bu -bu 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 What's ITD? Static. How are you? Rob, what was the first appearance of Adam Morlock? And what was his original name? It was him, and he appeared in two issues of Thor. I believe the issues were 165 and 166. Oh, no, wait a minute. Hold on. No, it wasn't Thor. It was, it was Fantastic Four. No, was it? He was in 165 and 166. He was him, but he showed up in the Fantastic Four. Oh, man. I know he showed up in the Fantastic Four for No. No, I think I'm right. Because he was also in the Fantastic Four. Uh, Jack Kirby drew it. I knew that. All right, let me see. Um... Just got an advertisement. Uh, looking, you see the new. Uh, I don't care about Hellboy. I honestly don't. Nice. Rob recovers. It was the Fantastic Four, and it was him. Yep, I knew it was. Um, you know why I always get kicked um, kicked to the curb on that one, is because I remember that the two parter in Thor really, really well. That's right, because the Fantastic Four found them, found the cocoon, and then boom, here he comes. But that first one, you really kind of got an idea of how powerful he was because Thor was just such a bad boy back then. Because it was right after that whole Mangog situation where Odin was, Odin was sleeping. And I, I, that was like one of my favorite storylines. Odin's sleeping. He's trying to defend the realm. Loki's no good. He's, you know, taking over the throne. And, ugh. Just old Jack Kirby was the best, and people just don't give him enough due. He is the king. He always will be the king in my mind. All right. Um, yeah, 67, 66. Yeah, 66, 67. Yep. See, I know what I was talking about. See, I can't, I can't, I can't test you guys in any questions, because guess what? You look it up online. That ain't fair. I'm just sitting here glowing. What was the first 
the first Walt Simelson uh, uh, Thor issue. Well, you see, this one's a tricky one because everybody thinks of that great run that he had, which was 336. But actually, it was one... His very first run was... He did a, a thing about Radnock. I, I can't even say that. Um, and I believe it was the one in the 170s. Once uh, late 160s and 170s, he did the whole run. Oh, actually, he did. He he was drawing it in the 150s. I'm sorry, 156 he started. So that was the first. So people get confused on that one. Nice try, Kabuki, with the with the trick question. Because everybody thinks that it was uh, 336 because that's when Beta Ray Bill first came, but that was the start of his historic run. His first run was in the one one hundreds. Well, I mean two hundreds. Excuse me. It was two two fifty uh, two fifty five. He started two fifty five two fifty six somewhere in there, and it was just he, he was. I don't think he was writing it. I think he was drawing it for a while first. I think I'm right. Rob is a real renaissance man, the apex physical specimen, talented artist, and full of knowledge. Well, thank you, Liz. Look at you. Kabuki, LOL, you know your stuff, Rob. Ah, got it. She was trying to trick me. I'm going to buy some in a few minutes. Hi, everyone. I was debating between renaissance man and rain man. Whoa, Helen, whoa. Whoa. I don't have a white jumpsuit or, or a white leisure suit. Uh, where'd you get that orange? Where'd you get the orange? Uh, my son-in-law made it. 337 was Beta Ray Bill, though, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Because that was after a bad run. Because uh, 300 was uh, the Celestial story. And then he had like a bunch of stories that were just really, really weird. And that, that, that like two year period was just like really kind of, you know, the book just took a dive. Then he took over and just breathed life into it. Because then that's where you get, you know, Malekith and and um, oh, the Destroyer story, the Satur, that whole story when, oh God, there, there were just so many good things. Loki, Lorelei, um, Sif finally gets a personality instead of being like some lovesick puppy, you know. She starts to show that she, that, you know, a woman doesn't have to chase a guy around all the time. And she could just be strong herself. Which was just awesome. Just awesome, awesome stuff. Alright, let's do this now. Let's do this. Alright, let me see. Uh, comic books, Rob. Oh, I missed something. Where did you get... Uh, ba, 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 ba. Yeah, I bought Thor back from the brink. Sure did. Thank goodness. White leisure suits wouldn't, wouldn't quite work for you. Renaissance is much more fun. Yes, exactly. Uh, out of cur cur uh, curiosity, is there a way to read these without investing mega bucks in them? Uh, yes, there is. Um... As far as Marvel is concerned, they on their channel, on, on their website, they have a really neat little program that if you pay $10 a month, you can read Unlimited. It's called Marvel Unlimited. And you can read everything. Everything. Now, they're behind as far as you're not going to be able to read the newest books. But you can read, like, so many. You could just sit there historically. Now, there's some illegal ways that you can do it, too. But we're not going to mention those on here because we are on a YouTube channel. But you can email me at NovaPrime860 at Hotmail.com. And I can suggest some ways that you can get some of these great comics to read. You see, I've never been a Superman fan. Now, John Byrne is one of my favorite... Favorite... Um, favorite people of all time and first of all he was very nice to me one time and I actually if you guys ever get 
if anybody has next men next men if remember the next men and i think i think it was 13 or 16 there's a dude on the cover and he looks like judge dread i don't know if it was 13 or 16 you will find a letter by yours truly that was answered by yes john byrne that's right i got my letter published i thought it was the coolest thing ever i really did uh, those look great Rob thank you Garth and I hope you're having a wonderful day well wow, Marvel Unlimited sounds great I never knew about it Marvel kind of announced a Nova movie for phase four let me tell you something if they do a, a Nova a Nova movie that's it I mean that's it for me I'm gonna lose it I will watch that movie and then there's nothing else I, I need to accomplish in life my wife will finally get the dream of hanging out with a little cabana pool boy because I'm just going to I'm going to cash in. There's no no sense in going on. No sense in going on. If I get to live long enough to see a Nova movie. Oh my god. How cool would that be? Probably that'd be the only movie that flops too. <laughs> no in my luck. But boy, would that be cool! They have to do it. They have to do because they have to do annihilation. Um, I was surely, I surely have that issue. I should dig it out. <laughs> Look at this. Killer Rabbit is a new sponsor. Killer Rabbit, the Killer Rabbit, is a sponsor on our channel. This makes him a legend. He will soon. Be free to use all kinds of really cool emojis that I'm working on. I don't just go for those cheap old emojis. I'm, I think things up. I'm creative. I want to thank you, Killer Rabbit. New credit card, but back in the club again. First of all, Killer Rabbit is a pleasure to have you back in the club. Thank you. We appreciate it. We appreciate your greatness. Thank you just don't know what else I can say I think I've said it all I think I've said it all all right here we go we're just trying to get this in between here these are a little tricky well let's get this guy in here he can sit there a little bit while these are drying don't worry we'll, we'll, we'll get it all done I promise you that I promise you I promise you that uh, let's see this is fun I'm at, I I like the Peter Ro on Supergirl, uh, the Peter David run on, on Supergirl. Hmm. I'll tell you why I don't like any of the Superman books. Okay? And this has to do with my theory of a lot of things. Okay? How, I mean, what do you deem a hero? A hero is somebody that faces insurmountable odds. That's why I think the word hero is used too loosely nowadays. And I, I find it a little disturbing. So, the reason Superman is so boring is because who's greater than Superman? Well, yeah, you could say Doomsday, but that wasn't until later on. But even then, you know, now he just pushes him around like he was nothing. You know, after that whole death of Superman thing, you know, it kind of, uh, you kind of go, yeah, whatever. Because now he's a pushover. So what... What What other supervillain, what supervillain that really said Lex Luthor? Well, he could kill Lex Luthor, Lex Luthor just looking at him. So that doesn't make him a great supervillain. There's nobody to test him. There's nobody to push him to that limit where you're faced. There's just no way you can win, but somehow you win. Why was Spider-Man so great? Uh, John Byrne's She-Hulk was funny. That was funny. Uh, MF, do I like Batman? Yeah, I like Batman. Why? But getting back to the question, Brainiac? No, Brainiac. Brainiac wasn't physical. Didn't push him to the limit. Didn't take him and 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 put him in a position where there's no win situation and that he had to rise above things. Look at Spider-Man. How many times he was sick? His aunt was in the 
you know, there were there were real life stories that were playing around him, and he was facing things, you know, life problems that that we all face, and still trying to be above and beyond and facing these insurmountable odds, where you're facing a, a foe like Doctor Octopus that was so much more powerful than you, and you're sick and you got a cold, but you still have to fight anyways, and there's no way you can win, and and yet somehow you find a way, just enough. To get by because you decided to keep fighting because you had so much to lose that's what that's what made marvel heroes so much better in the 60s and 70s because they told these wonderful stories they had real life problems you know superman his biggest problem was gee where's where's a phone booth oh no jimmy has a hangnail what do we do you know, it wasn't fun. Lobo and Superman fought at one point. Yeah, but you know, I think you know what I'm talking about. To have that, I love Brian Michael Bennis' run on the Ultimate, uh, the Ultimate Spider-Man. I thought that was very good, and it was it was a nice, it was a nice breath of fresh air in there. It really brought life back to the book, and it was it was good. I mean, that's the only thing you could say about it. It was really, really good and solid. My favorite run, well, first of all, Fantastic Four, the first Fantastic Four all the way to Nova's always be my favorite book and I'll always have a special place in my heart for it. But I think my favorite book was the Fantastic Four and John Burns run and how they told the tale of Galactus. Because they made Galactus, he wasn't good nor evil. He was, he was a force of nature. You know, he wasn't this joke that they make him every once in a while to be. And I think they lose that. They lose that with Doctor Doom. They don't give him that. You don't, you can't stand him, but you feel sympathy for him because he's evil for a reason. If you're going to be a heel, you got to be a sympath. You got to, you got to be able to get some heat. I always really got Peter Parker down. I thought they really got Peter. Yeah, I agree. Bizarro? No, because he beats him in it like he was nothing. He always, because always in those Bizarro books, it'd be like, I'm not going to hit him with all my strength because I would shatter him, but I'm going to have to use some of my strength. Oh, no. Superman was a joke until John Byrne rebooted him and made him human. You know, made him more realistic. All right, so now we're gonna let these dry for a little bit. Now we're just gonna kind of work around this. Okay, so let's get these in a nice little pile over here. And that's not how we're gonna leave these. We're, we're gonna keep working on these. What time do we got here? All right, we're doing all right. We're doing all right. We're doing okay. All right, so we're gonna put that there. You know, another another story that really stood out. I really, you know, and I, I'm I'm really sad that it didn't play out in the movies. Is if anybody's ever read Thanos Quest. Now Thanos Quest it was a fantastic story, and it tells how he goes about, and it, and it shows the brilliance of Thanos, and you don't get to see that yet because you really don't. If you, if you're not a comic fan, you don't know anything about Thanos. So, you know, I don't know how this movie's going to work. You know, I'm sure it's going to make a ton of money, but can they make you not like not like him? Did you ever read Teen Titans in the 80s with Marv Wolfman and George Perez? First of all, Marv Wolfman was very nasty to me and that was very heartbreaking cuz I think I've told that story if you guys don't know the Marv Wolfman story and it's one of the reasons that I tried to be make sure that when I go to conventions and people recognize me or or say hi to me or or say that they love my stuff I always make sure that I always pay attention to him because I was treated like garbage by Marv Wolfman and he wrote my favorite book of all time which was Nova Nova um, Nova one God's Learn. Wow, those look amazing, Rob. You're very talented. Thank you very much. I'm all right. The original Infinity Gauntlet was a good series. It sure was. I think it got a little carried away, but um, the new Teen Titans, 
George Perez would take a picture with my daughter every year because he lived down here. And um, I'll never forget, he was so nice to her. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell this story um, and have it end on a high note here. Not end the, the stream, but, you know, talking about uh, this. But he um, he was getting ready to take a break. And she Mimi was only, what were you, about seven, six? She was about six years old, and she loved Raven. And that's when the Teen Titan cartoon was, like, at its its superpower. Well, um, the guy goes, sorry, you'll have to come back later. And I, I didn't think anything of it. I was just like, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll come back later. It's not a big deal. And, you know, she was, she was sad, but she wasn't going to make a stink or throw a fit or cry. And he turned, and he admonished the, the guy... And he goes, don't you ever send the child away. He goes, I will always take time for the girls. And he opened up a, a cover of a, a graphic novel she has and opened it up and he drew a raven for her and he signed it and he took a couple pictures with her. And I believe we still have that those pictures somewhere. All right, this is static grass. So we're going to have some fun with some static grass. And... I'm just going to put that aside so I have it ready because we're, we're trying to move a little bit here. We're trying to move a little bit here. Do you like books like Creepy or EC Comics Tales of the Crypt? I've read them. I thought, I, I thought they were good. I, I always enjoyed them. This is snow. Now, some of you are probably sick of seeing snow, but this isn't real, so don't get confused. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna show you how I do this. And I really kinda sell the snow part. Now, uh, Rob, that's a truly amazing story. Now, the Nova story, the Marv Wolfman story, great story. Sorry about the Mar Marv was a jerk. I don't know if he, you know, I always took it kind of personally because I went to him, I go, listen, you know, when I was young, I couldn't read. I had a problem reading. But it just found out that I was just lazy. <laughs> and um, and my father brought home a big thing of comic books. Because uh, he he had, I don't know, he got it from somebody's um, thing. And and I, I remember the first book I read. It was Thor. Oh, God. I think it was 89. And I was hooked. So I went down to the comic book store. Well, the drugstore, to be honest with you. Now, you see, I'm just going to spread this out a little bit over this. And I'm just going to put a little more of the snow on here. And that's going to make it look like the big snow drift. And there we go. Pink. But, um, you know, the funny thing about it was I, I really... I saw that Nova book. And I wanted to be Nova. That's all I wanted to be. 1976, it came out, and uh, I was I was hooked. I never, never looked back. So, finally, you know, I'm I'm like in my 30s or something like that, and I go to this comic book convention, and I still had the very first book, and I meet him, and I go, you know, I, this book really helped me, you know to read and really really inspired me to do things and and you know it's how i viewed a hero because he just you know he wasn't a great hero he was always getting his butt kicked but you know you knew that he had greatness inside him which they they showed later on of course all right so with the snow here and i'm, I'm just gonna break this up for a second and, and i'll tell you the rest of the story hold on we have the sand underneath but we want the snow to kind of and I kind of put that snow so it gives a nice big snow pile. But but also you have that kind of dirty snow look. So it's not just this white thing. You have this, like, you have this kind of feel here that there's gra you know, there's there's dirt underneath. And, and that the snow's covered and that, that you know, it piles up. And that, that, you know, as this thing moves, it's digging up dirt because it's cutting through the snow because this thing's so heavy. So that's... That's the kind of thing I, I try to go for. So let's let's just kind of zoom in here and kind of take a look at that. Hopefully I can... Oh, there we go. So you get a good feel of what I'm trying to accomplish here. See? 
There we go. That's what we're trying to do. So I'm going to keep going with the rest of these while I finish the story. Silver Surfer was and remains my favorite. Oh, we'll get the Silver Surfer. Hold on. Hold on. Don't you go so fast, my friend. So, well, like I said, um, so I tell him this. He looks at me and goes, well, yeah, I, I made it for kids. He signs the book and pushes it aside and just goes, next. Went, oh, wow, that was, that was pretty, you know, maybe he was having a bad day. People have bad days. But I'm always so self-conscious when I meet people. And I, I, I almost kind of shell up because I don't ever want to be a Marv Wolfman. I, I just don't want anybody to have it because it was crushing. It was absolutely crushing. And I'll never forget that feeling. And I was just like, you know, my whole life I looked at this guy when he did Crisis on In Infinite Worlds and stuff like that. And I just said... You know, this guy's just such a great writer. He gets what I like. He knows what I like. Now, John Byrne, I had a totally different story with. I was in a comic book store. It was called the Excalibur in Connecticut. As a kid, I liked Ghost Rider. I quit comics for a few years, and they relaunched in the 90s. Yeah, 90s, it was cool, dude. Um, I'm trying to answer all this, but I, yeah, I'm kind of running along with these stories. I'm sorry. So anyways, we were at the Excalibur, and I'm waiting in a line, and it was during the 90s. I never got a chance to meet him, and I had this old epic, epic magazine, and on the last page was, was, um, it, it was the last Galactus story, and it was, it was, a, they never finished the story of it, because the magazine got canceled. And the last page, you finally find out who's behind all these, all the universe ending and stuff like that and stuff like that. And, and it turned out it was a watcher, a, a rogue watcher. And you went, oh my God, I got to find out what happened. That was the last. It was never published. So you never knew what happened. So I go to the comic, comic place and I said, you know something? I want this signed. And, and since he's coming, I think it'd be cool if he signed the last page. Well, I go up there and I got the page open and I put it in front of him. He goes, holy cow. He goes, I didn't expect to see one of these. And it was opened up to the watcher page. And of course he signs it. And I said, thank you so much. Now you gotta remember this is after the Marv Wolfman thing. So I'm kind of gun shy of anybody. You know, because it, it is mentally, you don't want your hero being ruined in your mind again. So I thanked him and I was about to walk up and he goes, you know, not for anything. Do you want to know what happens? So he tells me how the whole book was supposed to end. And, and, and people were waiting in line. He goes, take a wait. I, I can tell this guy this because he was just, he was really impressed. Number one, I went to him and I put the page down with the book open instead of opening the book and making him take it out of the plastic bag. Cause that's just a courtesy. I mean, come on, you just do that. And then I think, uh, you know, just by, he could tell I was a big fan of his work just by digging up something as remote as that. So, uh, that, that was a positive story. So there we go. Okay, so let's answer some of these questions. I'm sorry. So let's just answer some of these questions. Oh, hold on. What Did I miss something here? Uh, Helen, Eugene... Um, love it, snow, it really, it's, it's never really white unless it's like two minutes old. And that's what we're trying to go for. Exactly. All right. I have, we were talking about that. The Game Boy Geek. High quality, high energy, but man, he fit that all in there. Dude, those minis look insane, are insane. Dude, I, I'm sorry it took so long, Dan, but I got to be honest with you. I'm very picky on what I get to you. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I'll be done with this. So I, I, all I got to do is I got to spray over this. Um, and then what I'm going to do is, well, I got to let the, the glue dry overnight, spray over it, spray over it again. And then I'll have them all packed up on Saturday and they'll be on their way to you. So 
it's it's going to be done and I'll here I'll put I'll put a couple up there Dan so you can see oh, hold on let me uh, uh let me just get the thing so I could see it live instead of last second I'm sorry did you see I put the numbers on there and I really I really wanted to look and if you see it's a mountain of snow but it's not it's not all white snow so it doesn't look fake I try to add some dirt in there to give it a realistic view like these things are really going through so I hope you enjoy them I know uh, this we're gonna add some static grass so I'll show you how this turns out kind of doing a little bit of both here oh, hold on let's show Dan how this will turn out uh, actually yeah, uh, yeah we'll, we'll do these first and you just kind of kind of get a little creative with the glue sometimes and I like just letting the glue dance around a little bit and then we're going to take some of this static grass and oh, hold on here I didn't see my man Dan come in all right Game Boy Geek he's not happy with them so he's giving them to another patron have to wait some more oh well if he's not happy with them then boy I just I'm gonna feel bad so we're gonna just add a little bit of a static grass in there and sometimes I like to add some of that static grass in there we go I just figure I break it up a little bit so now you have kind of oh boy it did it again for crying out loud boom so now you with this because of the nice and you have that kind of static grassy look that works around it and I kind of like how that looks kind of makes it look like it's going through some of those fields that you see and that's I wanted it a little higher so it sits up nice so I hope you enjoy what I'm doing like I said I'll be done tonight that's that's not even a question so I just figure I do it live and I hope you enjoy them Dan because that's what's most important so there you go. So now we're just going to continue on with our, our little snow scene. Some of them are going to be snow, some of them are not. I got the airships already done, so that's good. Did you know in Marvel Universe, Santa Claus is actually the world's most powerful mutant ever registered? Of course he is. He's Santa for crying out loud. Not that bad Santa guy. There we go. All right. So now, put some more snow on there. And I love this stuff. Uh, you, you know, you can get this at any railroad or hobby store. You know, you can find packets of this stuff. This stuff just really works out well. And it really has a nice feel to it because when you spray it, it stays solid. It stays solid once you glue it down. Uh, there we go. It's getting lost there. Come on, boy. All right. I'm going to bed. See you guys all next time. Well, I will see you next time as well. That looks cool. They look great. Thank you. Wow, so much talent. Amazing. Really appreciate getting to watch this live. Well, I just enjoy having you guys here. And like I said, we're just having some fun. And we're just, well, we're just talking about nothing, really. <laughs> and that's half the fun of it, that we're just talk away. Now, I promised Dan I'd get these out. So he will definitely have these probably by Wednesday. Tuesday at the later. Tuesday more than likely, I think. And then he, he has a friend that he's dying to play with. So I wanted to make sure that I got this done this weekend. I, I mean this week. So these will be done tonight. 
Nice on the scythe video, my good friend Joe says. Thank you, Joe. Joe's a great guy. You gotta love miniature market. And it was nice of Dan to stop in for a second and just say hello. But Dan's just a great person. We're gonna be spent I think we're roommates in at Origin, so that's gonna be pretty good. And no, I don't snore, so don't worry about it. I have a mouth guard. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Those are brilliant. So glad I caught this live. And Dan is going to be tickled pink when he gets them. Well, I hope so. Did someone teach you some of the painting techniques or are you self-taught pretty much self-taught actually hold on I, i'm gonna correct that oh boy i made it well that's all right i can get that off actually that's kind of a nice little touch there i'm gonna leave that um there was a, a place in north haven it was i used to do just models and I would build all kinds of tanks and stuff. So I would buy the magazines. And they had this one magazine that was really good. And every month it had a special section that would teach you different things. And um, I would just walk down to that, that hobby store. And, you know, whatever allowance I got. It wasn't even allowance. My father, <laughs> my father was a cop. And he would, um, on the side, he would do, like, lawn work in the summer. You know, he was just always very driven, and he would drag us with him. In the winter, we would shovel driveways for his clients and stuff like that. So during snowstorms, we'd have the day off, and we would shovel from 8 in the morning till 5 at night. All for 5 bucks. <laughs> now, back then, 5 bucks was a lot of money. So, you know, I can't say much, but I would save that $5. And then sometimes we get a couple snowstorms or I would help him genite some driveways. And sometimes I would have like 20, 25 bucks. And I would go down and get the magazines and I would buy a couple of paints and usually a model or two if I could afford it. You know, some of the smaller models were only $1.99 or they had something that they were trying to get rid of and stuff like that. So, they had this one magazine. It was Beginner's Hobbyist or something. I forgot what it was. It was, it, was like a, it was like a newsletter. It was a local thing. And, you know, you would, you know, I would always pick the guy's brain for things on how to do things because I'd wonder, I'd look in the magazines, I'd go, well, how do you do that? I can't do that. And he would tell me things and stuff like that. And he says, but you go home and try it. And I would go home and try it. Or he would suggest, take a little of this and use this on after you put this color on. And I would do that. And sometimes he would give me some free, you know, out, out of stock stuff, you know, out of, out of, he would give me the old magazines because he just, I think he was just impressed because I was such a young kid and just wanted to, just wanted to model. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't a kid getting in trouble or something. And, um, and I would just go down there and listen to them and talk. And, you know, they had, there was a couple of old guys there that just would just do some of these incredible tank scenes that you just go, you got to be kidding me. That's just ridiculous. And uh, that's how I learned. And then um, in, hold on, uh, let me see. Those are brilliant, thank you. Looking sweet, my friend has been bugging me to paint his set, but I've got so much other stuff lined up, I'll have to point him away. Uh, $5 in 1965 is about 39 bucks today. Not too shabby for a kid. Oh, there you go. Look at you. I assume 1965 based off the next men comic you referred to no uh next men came out in the 90s 
not the X-Men. Mm -hmm. But you're probably right. No, it was it was early seventies. I would I would I would uh, go with my father. I was you know sixty five. I was still pretty young. I wasn't much used to him at at, at that age. Um, but uh, in a nutshell, I just I just absorb things. And then, you know, I play sports, but on those rainy days or those winters, because the winters were tough in Connecticut at one time. Isn't that right, Tam? Yep. So those, <laughs> those winters were brutal. And, boy, oh, that's right. Uh, I assume, da, 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 okay, I'm looking. Those are brilliant. So glad I caught this one. Okay. Let's just make sure I didn't miss any comments. I don't like missing comments. Yeah, so so all that kind of stuff was just always, you know, that's one of the things, you know, I never pushed Justin to be, you know, very athletic or anything like that. And he could have been. He could have been anything he wanted to be. But he wanted to learn the computer and learn. And some of the things he comes up with and does is just ingenious. He was a very smart kid. He wanted to be a paleontologist when he was small. But I never forced him to play any sports or anything like that. And I think it was good. You know, it wasn't one of those fathers that, you, oh, you have to be like your father. You know, you have to go be an athlete. No, just be yourself. Whatever you want to be. You want to be a rocket scientist? I'm going to be there. I don't have to feed my own ego. It's never about that. Never, ever. Hmm. So let's try. Well, let's finish this up. There we go. And I guess I saw the wrong date somewhere. I, I know nothing about next men. My bad. No, you're fine. You're fine. What's the matter? What's she complaining about? Hmm. I thought she was angry or hangry let's put this one aside here for a second all right and just work that in there all right And like I said, you just take your fingers and you go around the edges. Boom. Done. Done, done, done. Rob, did you ever read The Elementals by Bill Willingham? Yes. I was so impressed with Thor and how he killed their version of the Thor where he had the blue suit on. And he was like this young, like really cocky guy. The Elementals were cool. And I remember, I think, I don't know if that was issue, I forget what issue number was, but he like, oh, he like kills him or kills one guy and just no remorse, just takes and and he's a young Thor. He's not anything like the Thor you think. And everybody's like, oh, get out of here. You're nobody. And he just lays waste to the Elementals. The Elementals was a great book. You know, my, one of my favorite books was, it was from Caliber. It was called The Realm. Matter of fact, there's a new realm out now, but it's a little different. It's a lot different, actually. But it's really, really good. Rob was just a baby in 1965. Nah. I love Willingham's art. He also did... Um, Willingham... Didn't Willingham... Um... He did fables. You wouldn't have half the stuff. You wouldn't have that that uh, show on um, on ABC if it wasn't for him, because he did fables for DC Vertigo. I think. I think it was Willingham. He started it at least. That was another good book. The fables, The Sandman. Gaumann's big book. I am an attorney. 
Damon Higgins. What? Oh, Helen's an attorney. Okay. The attorney, Helen Adams. She's my favorite attorney. Go ahead, mess with me, guys. Realm and Dead World, as well as Crow, were some of the great caliber comics. Joe, you hit it right on the on on the number. You hit it right on the number there, Joe. All right. Ugh. A Wolf Among Us was a cool video game. Yes, it was. You love that game? Oh, I love it so much. She yeah, Mimi. That's one of Mimi's favorites. They're making season two of it. Oh, nice. Who? Big B. Big B. She likes Big B. Based on fables. Yep. Great comic. One of my favorites. Prince Charming was such a jerk. He's such a cocky idiot. Well, Snow White. Mr. Charming. And who can forget Red? She was. This one I'm going to do a little different with the dirt. See, we're going to take, we're going to put, we're going to make it almost like it's thawing. <sighs> it all makes sense when, when it dries. Kind of have the snow pile up on the side. Very cool. All right, I like that. We're going to go with that. Thanks, you're the best. You know it. <laughs> Actually, you guys are the best. What time do we got here? 7.22? Well, I got the glue out. Let's just bang these out. And we're just gluing away here. Oops. There we go. And here we go. Aren't most Prince Charming's jerk jerks? Who needs a knight in shining armor? I'll take my idiot in tinfoil anytime. <laughs> Good one. My wife will agree with that one. I am no Prince Charming. I'm about as foul mouthed and nasty as they come. All right, let's just get this in here. I like those with a little bit. Maybe I'll put a little snow on those other ones. I'll decide once it dries. And then we'll put this in here. Joe, are you still there? Because I just spoke to Steven a little while ago. And he told me that something, oh, I forgot what the heck was coming out. Something that you did or something. Oh, that uh, All Quiet on the my, uh, All Quiet on the Martian Front, you came out with the Goliath, which looks cool. I can't believe that bad boy finally came out. He was talking about the Goliath. He said, make sure you get one. I'll, just, I'll make sure I get one. I also got to get magic cards. I got to get, which aren't going to be here this week. So maybe we'll do them next week. And then I got to get, 
Green Horde, because everybody wants to see Green Horde. So we'll see how that goes. All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's just move this around a little bit. And we'll just add a little bit of snow. Because snow makes the world go round. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll ship you a Goliath. Thank you, brother. Rob, do you have the original cut original cut of Godzilla from Japan? Yes, I do. Should be out next week. We are launching a contest to win one. Cool. I want to ask how long you've been a Godzilla fan, Rob. Me, since I was about four years old. Um, Godzilla is very dear to me for a couple of reasons. Um, my uncle, who was everything to me, is the only real relative that I had that was important to me and um oh god I, I I was a Godzilla fan since I was uh wee small I can tell you that I was just amazed turning on channel seven in the afternoon and and then creature double feature and chiller from New York and watching all those really great old sci-fi movies them but Godzilla stuck with me I, I loved everything that they did it was just uh, it does it's very very important to me and I'm just a massive massive fan but I have the original Godzilla and um, um, I, I really like the original better than than the I almost don't, I can't watch the American version of it it's just a weird thing for me I just I, I refuse to watch it I think it's just it's hokey because now you look at it you know back in the day you all you cared about was the monster but but Raymond Burr ruins that movie of course when he came back in 1985 I thought he actually added to the movie <laughs> because he wasn't Steve Martin anymore he was just Steve Mr. Martin oh, that's right and he actually added to the movie so it was kind of cool because you know it wasn't he wasn't dubbed in the movie he was never supposed to be in that and that's the way that is that's all I have to say about that huh all right, hold on here. Let me just move these around a little bit. Okay, move that over there. And let's get this guy here. What time is it? Okay, we're doing all right. Um, okay, blah, blah, blah. Hey, not too bad. We're talking Marvel co Comics mostly. <laughs> uh, how are you, Neutral? I think we're kind of talking to everything, to be honest with you. I don't think we've missed too much. This was kind of like a painting Q&A thing. That started out with two thumbs down before we even got going. And look, we turned it around. Now we only have three thumbs down. Nice. I always found that funny. And I'm just gonna we're gonna add some grass in here. We're gonna do a few things with this, so it's it's gonna be pretty good. Oops. Just making a mess here towards the end. Alright. Alright, there we go. I'm a huge Marvel fan. 
Now we are on to Godzilla, a totally <laughs> out this time. <laughs> oh boy, that's funny. Uh -huh. I don't know why people come in here if they don't want to be in here. You know, if somebody's doing something live, why why bother with them? Why mess with them? But that's the way the internet works. It's just a cruel place. All right. How long should cheaper paint brushes last they go until you feel that you don't have control of them you know I, I I usually I save them for like doing this work kind of work you know like this will get thrown out after this oh boy butter fingers butter fingers not what I wanted to do All right, so we'll let that dry. And most of all, we'll clear this out. And we'll clear this out. We'll wipe this down. Let's see. Uh, Joseph says, at Justin, get some brush restore. Yes, I have that to preserve them. But you'll dry brush, but if you dry brush with them, they'll wear out a little faster. See what Rob says. I agree with everything Joe just said. Uh, I dry brush a lot, so I always buy the cheaper brushes, and that way, you know, they don't last as long. Like this one, that's, that's dead. That is a dead issue there. All right. So... Now we've got to wait for this to dry and then brush these guys off a bit. We'll get all the excess out of them. And then maybe we'll add a little green here and there and stuff. But we're going to let this dry overnight. Then we're going to spray it. Then I'll spray it one more time. And then they'll be ready to go to Dan. I'll probably touch things up a little bit too. Um, if I do that, I'll tape it. And because we have other live projects that we have to work on that we are going to be working on next week. So I'm looking forward to getting those done. So we're really flying along here. Uh, as you can see, I've also got these guys that I've, I'm going to finish this evening real quick. I'm, I just got to put, put some more coats of paint on these and finish them off. Uh, we got to work on that. But pretty much, we've got everything where we want it to be. It'll be done. So while I'm drying those, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to base those next in the background. And we're going to be good to go. And this is going to be a done project. Thank goodness. Um, I guess we could do this. Let's see if we could do this. All right, let's see. Just to give you guys a better look what's going on and there you go all right whoops I don't want to touch that too much let's put that back in there whoa 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 what do we do ah oh, there we go <laughs> you got to see the menu very cool uh, I thought you mentioned winning a team I didn't go there, Derek. Whatever. Uh, do you prefer to use Beastie Bash? I didn't go to Beastie Bash. Uh, I don't even know what you're talking about. There was some weirdo that was uh, there asking about me or something like that. I thought that was a little weird. Oh, okay, another one. Okay, whatever. Um... Let's see. 
two, do, 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 do. Thanks for showing us this. Scythe minis look challenging to paint. Yes, they do. I'm kind of annoyed. Brought a cart to hold my paints in office. Just came in broken. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm waiting on customer service now, so I'm annoyed. Uh-oh. All right, let's see. What else? Uh, does... The cocaine on the, the whatever. Uh, I watered down all my paints, but it depends on how fast you want paints versus quality you want to get. Just my opinion. Well, there you go. Uh. So there we go. So I think that's about it. Any other questions? Don't forget to subscribe. Okay, so pretty much we got this all done. So we're doing pretty good on it. Um, hey, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that notification button. That we will. And... Let me see, what else do we have? Okay, so we've got these pretty much done. Rob, thank you for all your great tips and your positive attitude. Thank you, Justin, I appreciate it. I'm just gonna make sure that we don't have any other questions before we shut this down and we get going. Uh, what is your next live? Oh, I might do a solo game on, hmm. I might do a solo game Saturday. I'm not going to promise anything. We'll just see how it goes. Um, I'll show you the final results of these too. Uh, and we'll get those done. And uh, there we go. I think I, I think that, that covers it all. I think I said all I could possibly say. Thanks, Rob. Great job. Looking awesome. Thank you so much. All right. I ask about using an airbrush versus paintbrushes because we consider consider getting an airbrush. Uh, that should be that video should be coming up very 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 soon. So I'm looking forward to getting that done. Uh, no questions, but you no questions, but you have a great evening. Hope you and the fam have a great one. Thank you, Liz. Thanks, Rob, for the live stream. Just wanted to let you know that I appreciate everything. Thank you, Bow Hunter. That means a lot. All right, we've done it all here. We've we've uh, gotten this pretty much where we want to get it. I got to clean up a few things, but it's 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 something I'm going to do off air. Um, and other than that, I think we 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 finished up here. Um, tomorrow. I'm going to be tied up. Oh, that reminds me. I got to go do some, I got to upload a video for you guys. And Friday, I'm going to recon. So I'm going to be taking a whole bunch of video for you guys. So we'll have a whole bunch of stuff uh, that I think you guys will really enjoy. So I will see you guys at recon. Uh, it depends on what you want. You're wanting to do with an airbrush. He, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay, Killer Rabbit, we'll see you. Thanks again for for being a sponsor we really appreciate it and guys i think that's about it i think we covered it all we'll talk to you guys later